Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to Crosslands Community Church in Olverston, England. Uh, my name is Bradley Ralph, I'm sitting here in Estes Park, Colorado. Right behind me is the Rocky Mountains and we're sitting here in the US wishing you guys a great Sunday morning. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to lead. Um, my affiliation with the church is uh, I am a possible intern to the lead pastors there at Crofflands, and I'm really looking forward to getting the opportunity to come over, uh, learn, grow, and share. Uh, so with that said, I'm just going to pray for the service and uh, get us started into our first song. So, dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given to us today, Lord, and everything you will give us. Lord, I just pray that as we go through today, that your will be done in our lives, that we look to honor and glorify you in everything we do, that we look to make you the top of everything we strive for. Lord Jesus, I just pray that we live for you more and more as we go through our daily lives. And Lord Jesus, I love you and praise you. And it's in your name I pray, Lord Jesus, amen. And with that, I just wanna introduce us to our first song, which is called Come As You Are by David Crowder. And I wanted to play this song just because I wanted everyone to get this feeling that uh, no matter where you are in life, no matter what's been going on, no matter what people have been saying about you, no matter the names that you've been called, you can come to Jesus as you are, because that's how he loves you, wherever you are. And that's where he'll grow you and mold you. And with that being said, let's praise and worship him together. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burden.
I'd like to welcome back now James and Arelna as they've just gotten back from doing missionary work. Uh, sounds like James and Arelna have been doing missionary work in the United States and China. We're going to be hearing from James this morning about his testimony, about some of the work he's doing. I'm so excited to hear about that. And then uh, Arelna is going to give us a nice little Bible reading. So that is going to be a huge blessing. And with that, I just welcome them in. Them in. Hello, my name is Arelna. I'm from India. It's Northeast India. <laughs> Uh, a small state called Nagaland and today I want to read a scripture from Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 to 17 then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him and John tried to prevent him saying I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my son, in whom I am well pleased. Thank you. i 
Hi, my name is Zion. Hi, my name is Superman. I mean Zeph. And we really hope you enjoy my dad's story, story today. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm really thankful for this opportunity uh, just to share my story with you, a bit about my family, a bit about my life, but more importantly, uh, how amazing God has been to me. And um, yeah, so my name's James, I'm from Ulverston. Uh, yeah, Ulverston, born and bred. Um, I'm married to a lady from Northeast India. Uh, she's called Arenla, uh, amazing woman. I've got two kids. My daughter, who's 11, <coughs> is um, called Zion. And my son, who is eight, is called Superman. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, he thinks he's Superman. He's called Zef. And um, yeah, so since I was 24, God really turned my life around. And um, I want to show you a bit about my testimony, about how he did that and where my life was at at that point. Uh, but before that, I just want to just tell you, let you know what, what I've been doing since I've been 24, since he turned my life around. Um, he saw me... Lee, he told me to leave England uh, right after that. So I got a job teaching English in Japan. And then from there, I saved up some money to go and do a Youth with a Mission, YWAM, uh, discipleship training school, which is like Bible school, basically. Uh, and I went and did that in North Thailand. And then when I was at that school, we did a little outreach uh, into China. I didn't want to go to China at all. I was asking everybody, what do we have to go to China for? I don't know nothing about it. They all do Kung Fu or something. And um, in the end, we went to China. And then after I finished my school, um, I ended up moving to China for 14 years. And so God has just done some amazing things out there um, through, through us, through our team. And um, uh, just getting to walk with God into those things has just been just a pleasure and just a, a huge learning curve right across the board um started a skateboard company because i'm a skateboarder um and we use that as a platform to reach out to so many young people right across china and in the city where we were a city called nanning which was in the south of china and so um we had a skate church we had like street ministry we'd go out and help homeless people feeding them uh, we would do all kind of um, outreach as well into into the villages. Uh, we pioneered a work, well, my wife pioneered the work, and um, reaching out to a minority group called the Bunu Yao, who lived way up in the mountains. You would have to trek uh, up and down all the, the mountains and the valleys to find these little pockets of people. And so we were able to see uh, some people come to the Lord there as well. So God's just taken us on this wild adventure. Uh, but it's funny because, yeah, like I said, I'm from Alverston, born and raised. You know, I was, uh, I grew up going to church, going to the Emmanuel Christian Center with my mum and dad and my sisters, and uh, got a lot of uh, great memories from from going there. And uh, but at some point along the way, it, I don't know how it happened. I think when I was fourteen years old, like my, I could tell that my my walk with God was just like starting to to change a bit you know it started to become a bit distant for some reason and um i remember it was at at that church where i actually first encountered god and asked him to come and live in my heart and it's where i must have been about eight years old or something i was in a in a meeting not really paying attention to what the preacher was saying and then it just felt like this presence and this love of God. And it was so strong about me that I just started crying. I didn't know what to do at all. Uh, so I just walked out of the room, uh, went down into the toilets, and I just talked to God honestly and openly and said, Hey, God, um, I know this is you. I know you love me so much. Please come and live in my heart. You know, Please save me. And it was that point where, where he saved me. I really believe that. But like I said, by the time I was 14 years old, my, my walk with Jesus had, had kind of stopped somehow. And church had become about just meeting up with my mates. And when we were 14, um, me and my mates from church, we just bought a bunch of cider and, and, and got drunk for the first time. And it felt like bit by bit, like God was so out there somewhere. And it was hard to communicate. It was hard to talk talk to him, you know, and, and all the rest of it. But this alcohol, this 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 uh, bottle of beer was just right here. I could touch it. I could grab it. I could hold it. I could drink it. I could be changed by it. 
and because I was a shy kid, right? And so when I drank this this alcohol, I could just you know talk to girls and and all the rest of it. And so church would become about like laughing about what we did the night before on a Saturday night. And I would just sit at the back with my mates. And slowly but surely, my life um, started to be more about those things. Um, I started smoking weed um, and drinking more. And you know what it's like uh, for a young person in Overson. There's not that much to do, really. And it's funny because I'm walking around the streets now after being away for so long. Uh, 19 years ago, I left Overston. And as I'm walking around the streets and I'm seeing all these young people hanging around at summer holidays and all this, and I've just got so many memories coming back of what of what I got up to. And um, so, yeah, bit by bit by bit, my life started just to to get more and more messy and further and further away from God, at least from my from my side. I know he never left me, but I was starting to leave him. And uh, by the time I, I finished uh, university, um, yeah, I went away to university. I studied English literature. It's a miracle how I how I got a degree at all. I don't remember much of it uh, because it was just all about the party. It was just all about the new people, new new experiences. There was new drugs to do, party pills and all the rest of it. And so that's what my life became about, you know, Um so much so that by the time I graduated university, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I had no clue. Um, every time I looked at my future, I'd be afraid. I'd be scared. The only thing I knew was I loved skateboarding. I loved my family and my friends, and I loved to get high. That's all I knew. And um, so I came back to Olverston after I graduated, and uh, I stayed with my parents. I got a job as a as a postman. And um, I would just I would just get stoned at like six o'clock in the morning with my post office friends and just float around my route, go back home, sleep, wake up, skate, uh, or wake up, go to the pub, and my life just became this cycle of just like, oh, it was it wasn't good. I wasn't fulfilled by it, you know. But I didn't know any other way out of it. And um, I remember going uh, one weekend to a friend's. Uh, house near Liverpool and he ha used to have these amazing parties by the world standards you know like DJ loads of girls around loads of uh, drinking and, and drugging and after I just remember this one night I felt so hollow even though I was as high as I could be I was so hollow I felt like there was something there's an empty space just right here and I remember going home on the train the next day just like completely depressed completely dark and thinking is this my life is this all that there is you know and um it was soon after that um that i got a bad injury on my back like a repetitive strain injury and so i couldn't skateboard which was my only freedom my only escape really from from uh these things i was experiencing in my life this like sadness and depression because every time i would step on my skateboard it'd be like my problems were left over there and I was free for a bit but when I stopped skating it all came back it was this vicious circle anyway so I got that injury I couldn't skate so my freedom was gone Do you know what I mean like so I just started drinking more and doing and doing more stupid stuff and um, one morning I woke up and I went to go do some like physio on my back in in Barrow came back to Alverston and there was a young lady standing in my mum and dad's uh, living room talking to them and she came up to me and uh, shook my hand and said you don't remember who I am do you and I was like oh no what what's happened you know what have I done type thing and uh, she, anyway it turned out I'd done nothing and she used to be uh, the daughter of some family friends and we used to hang out when we were when we were young and so she told me and my mum and dad about uh, about her life when she went to moved over to Israel because her mom and dad wanted to be missionaries out there, and uh, she just started crying um, because um, she began to just tell us about about how her family had been ripped apart because her mom had had an affair, and she was just broken, like really sad, just like crying loads. But then she said something. She said, "But you know, even though there's all this going on, it's okay because I've got Jesus." And I know he's with me. And I know he's got me. And I swear down, right? 
when she said that, it was just like um, this invisible kind of ray of light just came onto my heart. And I was like, just blown away. And I knew right there in that moment that that's what was missing in my life, that relationship and that walk with Jesus, right? And when she left uh, the house that day, um, I went straight to my bedroom and I got down on my knees and I just said as simply as I could, just like when I was a kid in the church, I said, Jesus, I made a mess of my life. God, please come and help me. I need you. You are the one thing in my life that is, is perfect and good. And I need you back. And I need to be with you. I can't even remember what I said exactly, but I just said to him openly and honestly, I need him. And from that day, the, f the few weeks after that was a real struggle. Um, I'd be feeling feelings of just like pure forgiveness and feeling God's love and all the rest of it just flowing all over me. And I'd be breaking down in tears, you know, uh, just under the power of his love and how much he loved me. And, and then the next day I'd be doubting his existence. It was like this real roller coaster of a, of a, a ride that, that few weeks after I met that girl. Um, but slowly and surely, God just began to just pick me up and, and lead me. And he led me to a, another guy who had just come down from Scotland uh, to start a little church in Alverston. And I got to his house and i about to share everything in my life with him somehow. Like, how did I find myself at that point to knock on this stranger's door? Um, it was just miracle after miracle after miracle. And that guy, he kind of really shepherded me through through what was going on in my life. And uh, from that point on, um, I was been, I've been sold out for Jesus, you know. And um, it's the greatest thing ever. But, you know, when we go out and we do all the mission work and all these other things, life can start to, to, to change again very quickly. It can start to pull pull you off and out from that real close, tight walk with with God and with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that something that I'm going to share this morning is that God wants us all to get back to that tightness with Him. And the thing that I'm reminded about right now is the baptism of Jesus. Jesus was the Word of God, right? And when He went down into the water to be baptized in, in obedience to the Father, right? The Holy Spirit came down on him. So the Spirit of God touched the Word of God. And then the Father as well was in the mix as well. And he said something. He said, this is my son, <clears throat> excuse me, in whom I'm well pleased. And recently, after all these missionary experiences and doing this and doing that, all the work and all of that stuff, like God has just been... Um, talking to me about this simple thing. Uh, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That was before Jesus went off and did any miracles. It was before he died for anybody on the cross. It was before he, he, he took all our sin away. It was before he'd done anything, right? So what was it that he'd done that pleased the Father so much? And God has just been speaking to me recently that the thing that Jesus did probably the most important something he ever did was just to simply walk with his father as a son and walk with the Holy Spirit, right? It's as simple as that. Knowing God, it's not about all this stuff that he wants you to do. It's part of it. But the most important thing is that relationship and that tightness with him. And Jesus showed us what it was like to walk like that with the Father. He showed us perfectly what it was like to be a son, how, how much that transformed and changed people around, around him, the people he met. It all came from that identity of being a son. That's where his peace came from. It's where his security came from. It's where his power and his authority came from. I am God's son. And that's what... Ah, it's amazing. That's what he showed us how to do. That's what he showed us what it looked like to be a, a child of God. And then he went and made the way for us to have it too. That's what he was doing. So now we get to walk, yeah, that's right, with, with the mind of Christ 
as a child of God. And so I just want to encourage everybody today, and maybe I'll get a chance to talk more about things in the future, but it's not complicated. Walking with God is not complicated. We've just got to do it like Jesus did, to know that we are his, that we belong to him, and uh, to know that he loves us so much. My prayer right now for myself, my my biggest prayer always is, is God, reveal your love for me. Show me how much you love me. Because when I understand that, it will change everything. So that's my prayer for, for everybody listening to this as well. Um, that, that you would see how much your father uh, loves you. Okay, nice talking. We'll talk again, I'm sure. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye. To sin, to God alive Born again into a new identity Once asleep to God in sin Now wakened by the blood and cleansed Born again to be who He called me to be All I have I lay Run the race to gain the prize For the sake of knowing Jesus Christ in me I cannot yet fully see All I'm truly called to be But knowing Christ reveals my hope and destiny He calls me child Bound to sin, now free He calls me holy, calls me righteous By the blood redeemed He calls me overcomer, crowned with victory This is my destiny
Thank you all so much for uh, watching this service today and I'm uh, wishing and praying great things for you as you go into your week and I hope to see you back on the stream or the uh, YouTube channel or watching service soon and I hope to meet a lot of you in person again soon uh, and with that being said I'll close this with the grace so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Y'all take care.